Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode and today I'm going to show you some of the cheapest vintage lenses that you can buy. Now these are all high quality optics and they will all make outstanding images. In fact, it's difficult to distinguish the images that these lenses make from those from much more expensive lenses. You really can't tell the difference if you don't know. They were cheap when they were new and they're still cheap. Now, they were made for the consumer market for, you know, serious photographers, people who very much love photography and understood it, but didn't want to fork out lots and lots of cash for sort of top shelf brands like Olympus or Nikon or Canon. And these lenses show if you need proof, these lenses prove that you can still buy high quality vintage lenses very, very cheaply indeed. I bought each of these lenses for £10, but maybe you can top that. So let me know what was your best value vintage lens purchase in the comments box below. I'd love to hear about those. Now, I don't know about you, but I do feel personally a certain perverse pleasure in making fantastic images with a really cheap lens you know one that's very cheap not not very sought after maybe a little bit looked down on by some photographers <laughs> i get a real sort of perverse pleasure out of that so with something of an inverse snobbery feel let's check out the glass the first lens we're going to look at today is sitting on the front of my Sony A7 here because I've not uh, shot it very long ago, a few days ago. It's the Miranda 50mm f2 and what can I say, this lens is a big big surprise. I bought it from eBay just recently, it was sitting there, it was advertised at £10. Um, the seller said it was in pretty much as new condition but nobody seemed to want it so I thought well that sounds an interesting lens that channel viewers might like so I bought it and I'm very very pleased with this purchase so far this is an astonishing little lens let's have a look at the lens first of all so there's the lens mounted on my Sony a7 and you can see it's a very small compact little thing and it really is in very very nice condition everything turns cleanly and smoothly the focus ring turns very nicely it focuses from 50 centimeters all the way around out to infinity of course the aperture ring is at the back on this lens and it moves surprisingly nicely some cheaper lenses have a bit of a clanky feel to the aperture mechanism but not this one this one is actually really nice and uh, you know relatively smooth the stops are full stops there are no sort of half or third stops that you get on some lenses but that's no problem if you need an intermediate value it's easy enough to leave it perched between two settings it's a K mount lens so it mounts very easily on mirrorless there's the adapter and there's the K mount at the back and it really is in beautiful condition the seller was absolutely honest about this lens I'm not sure how many aperture blades it's got let's have a look one two three four five six aperture blades so you are going to get some hexagons in the background blur if you stop down personally I don't mind that it's got quite a bit of plastic I think used in its construction but you know I'm really not bothered about that it's a nice cheap lens and it's a nice light lens so that's fine I really don't mind a bit of plastic now in terms of the images it makes this lens is well I mean it's really nice it makes some fantastic images I'm almost tempted to use the word outstanding because they are very very nice images indeed first of all this is a sharp lens, even wide open. The optics, I don't know who made this lens, but whoever's made it has produced a really sharp lens 
wide open you can shoot it wide open all day long and really not encounter any problems it does get mega sharp if you stop it down to f4 or 5.6 or so and if you do that in the background blue you're going to get some hexagons as i say but you know i don't mind that that's fine so a very sharp lens indeed surprisingly sharp color is really nice it's got very strong contrast it's a multi-coated lens of course because it's i think it's from the mid to late 80s maybe 90s sometime so it's got very strong contrast and because of that the colors are very deep and very resonant and very rich and the color balance is nice as well it's quite a coolish lens i wouldn't say it's particularly cool but it does have a cool kind of feel to its images but generally very strong very deep very resonant colors very nice and pleasing colors uh, in fact blur background blur is very very nice from this lens very soft um, I couldn't find any unpleasant harsh spots no matter how much I change the distances between camera and subjects and subject and background blur from this lens stayed pretty jolly smooth all the time and it's certainly on a par with some of the fancier vintage lenses uh, that I've tested most vintage lenses have a bit of harshness somewhere in their focusing scale and range this one i didn't find it i'm not saying it's totally not there but i couldn't see it while i was using it so that was really nice to see and the blur has some swirl as well which personally i like i know it's not everybody's cup of tea but i do like a little bit of swirl in the background blur and this lens will give it to you it won't give quite so much as say a Carl Zeiss Jena Pancola 1.8 and it certainly won't give as much as a Helios 44 but it does give you some blur and it's really nice too quality of the background blur is beautiful it makes bubbles from point light sources that kind of fill up the whole of the uh, visual field it's just a lovely little lens there's not very much vignetting there's a little bit wide open at f2 but that disappears by f 5.6 and again a tiny little bit of purple fringing but really nothing to write home about the cost as i say of this lens was 10 pounds and there will be others like this out there maybe not this exact one but there will be others like this and there probably are lots of these around that have, you know, sat in people's drawers and camera bags for years and years and not been used. And many of them will be in nice condition like this one. So look out for this one. If you see one of these at a cheap price, grab it because it really is well worth it. Miranda 50mm F2. A really good value £10 lens. I can't think of any better way to spend a tenner. So the next lens, well, let's have a look. What have we got? Let's have a look at this one. And the next lens came in a box. Look, a big Pentacon box. Pentacon Objective. Objective. I'm sorry if that's not the right pronunciation. My O-level German is a long time ago. But yeah, it came in a box and it's the Pentacon 135mm f 2.8 now this is a heavy old beast of a lens it's entirely made from metal it's got a little lens hood that slides out it's a fast 135 and it will give you tons and tons and tons of background blur and for that reason alone it's a nice lens it's got an m42 mount it's all metal construction there's lots of glass and metal in there and it's a weighty old thing but it makes some really nice images let's have a closer look to begin with there's our pentacon and look at its shiny finish this must have been quite a looker in its day lots of serial numbers around the barrel there We've got Pentagon Auto 2.8, 135, 
serial number and made in GDR. Of course that's the old East Germany. This lens has a, a hood, an inbuilt hood, which is very very handy because it does sometimes suffer from loss of contrast due to light, um, you know, strong light. Everything still turns nicely and works nicely on this lens. The focus ring is lovely and smooth. It focuses down to probably not very close, 1.7 meters, but because it's got loads of reach, that really doesn't matter. It's got this nice uh, chrome finished plate here with, uh, again, with the uh, aperture reading. So th is that the depth of field scale? No. <laughs> that's the aperture scale. So the silver scale is the aperture scale. Nice and easily distinguishable from the focusing scale. So that is a real nice piece of design on the part of Practica and Pentacon. There's the M42 screw mount. Very simple mount. It just screws on with a screw thread and it's on the camera. Look at that lovely big front element there. Let's open up a bit so you can see it. Oh, we'll just close down. There we are. Yeah, beautiful big glass front element. These really are high quality optics in these lenses, despite the fact that they were cheap when they were new. A very, very nice lens indeed. It's very sharp. This is another lens that you can shoot from wide open and not suffer any noticeable loss of sharpness of course it will get sharper if you stop down just as any lens will and if you go down to say 5.6 or f8 it does become very sharp indeed at a slight loss of background blur however this lens makes so much blur especially when you're reasonably close to your subject that it's not always a good idea to have that aperture fully open if you're very close to your subject and you're wide open well much of the background is going to disappear and you're just going to end up with a washed out you know blurry big load of blur so um it's probably a good idea to to stop down a little bit in those conditions just to retain some form in the blur so that we can see the some blur there if that makes sense after all if everything's totally blurred out there's no real blur at all so a sharp lens um it's got very very nice background blur again i couldn't unsettle it soft all the way there may be a patch of harshness here and there but i really could not unsettle this lens no matter how I shot it and what the distances that I was using were. So very, very successful in that regard. There is a bit of vignetting with this lens if you shoot it wide open, but you know, that's to be expected. It's a, a fast 135 vintage lens that wasn't absolutely top shelf quality uh, when it was brand new. Um, and in fact, much more expensive lenses display lots of vignetting wide open. I don't think I've shot a vintage lens wide open, at least not a fastish one, that didn't have some significant vignetting. So this is, um, you know, about par for the course. I don't think it's anything unusual at all. And I actually don't mind a bit of vignetting. I think it focuses attention onto the subject. So, um, yeah, a little bit of vignetting that disappears if you stop down. No purple fringing that I could see. There may be a little there somewhere to be found, but it's certainly not significant. It's certainly no worse than other more expensive lenses, and it may be a bit better than some as well. Um, price and name it's becoming apparent are no guarantee of quality when it comes to vintage lenses it's a good pretty good rough guide but you know when it comes to sorting out the differences between the cheap lenses and the expensive ones well very often there's not that much difference in picture quality uh, in um, you know in the various visual elements like vignetting and blur and so on the cost of this lens 10 pounds Again, an absolute bargain and 
you know, I, I can think of very few better ways to spend a tenner. What does a tenner buy you these days? I don't know, a rail ticket, a local rail ticket, <laughs> a, a, about that much petrol. I reckon this is a bargain for a tenner. Very nice lens, highly recommended. So next we've got a zoom lens. This is the Miranda 70 to 210 4.5 to 5.6 MC macro. Again, made in Japan. Who knows by whom it was made? Could have been Cosina or one of those kinds of manufacturers or Tokina or somebody like that. Um, it has the word macro emblazoned across it. A lot of those old lenses, zoom lenses from the 70s and 80s, say macro on them. All right, it can go reasonably close, but the best it can manage is one to four. So I suppose that's uh, that's fairly close, isn't it? That's uh, not quite macro, but fairly close. Well, now this is another lens I bought for £10 in absolutely top condition. It's hardly been used and it looks like it's hardly ever been out of the box. It's still got its past sticker on it and it's in really nice condition. So there's the Miranda Zoom 70 to 210 and it's a push-pull lens. So we push it to go to the, is it long end or short end? Yeah, we push to go to the long end and it's got the markings on there, the focal length markings, and we pull back to come to the wide end. So long end, wide end. Everything turns very cleanly and smoothly on this lens. It's got a giant focusing thing, a rubber mat here, rubber grip, and that's got a little diamond studded surface. That's very easy to turn and to grip and very, very easy to find. The aperture rings at the back here. It's a little bit clunky. The aperture ring is a little bit slightly stiff to turn. That's how it was made. I don't think that's a defect of any kind it just happens to have been made that way um, again full stops between apertures no third or half stops but that's about par for the course for these cheaper lenses this is a k-mount lens there's the k-mount on the back loads and loads of film cameras use this mount probably thousands of film cameras use this mount and it's very very easy to get an adapter and mount it on your mirrorless camera. I think this is all metal. Yeah, I think it is. That does sound like metal. There's no built-in hood on this one, so you will need a hood. It does suffer from uh, shooting in very intense light or bright sunlight. There's a good range of focal lengths offered by this lens. 70 is a favourite of mine. Uh, you know, 70 to 90 range, I much prefer to 50 mil. I'd much rather shoot on a slightly longer uh, range. And if you go all the way to the end, it becomes very long indeed. 210 mil on full frame, about 300 mil on APS-C, and about 400 mil if you're shooting micro four thirds. Lots of nice colour coding on the lens. That's nice to see. You can tell exactly where you are. <clears throat> this lens makes beautiful images. I really like the images from this lens. They're relatively low contrast. Very delicate, very, very beautiful sorts of images. I really do like them. Um, it does suffer from contrast loss, though, if you're shooting in high you know very bright sunlight so you will need a hood if you're doing that it's a low contrast lens anyway and that contrast drops even further in very bright intense sunlight if you catch it at the wrong angle on the front element there but beautiful delicate dreamy images that i don't know it's it's got a character of all of its own this one i, I really like uh, what this one can do Colours are very beautiful, very delicate, managing to be at the same time quite resonant, quite deep, but at the same time very delicate and very, I don't know, ethereal. Is that too? Is that going too far? It probably is, but the colours certainly are delicate 
from this lens and it will give you a sharp image as well from wide open now granted wide open is not very wide open on this lens it's 4.5 at the short end and 5.6 at the long end so yeah th these images are likely to be sharp because they're being made um, at a fairly slow aperture but nevertheless very sharp images blur is beautiful I've got some absolutely lovely blur from this lens no swirl unfortunately the longer lenses don't often display swirl i've more often seen that in the shorter lenses unless it's something like a helios 40 of course um, but very beautiful blur that i couldn't unsettle couldn't find any harsh points nothing that looked awful and i made some really nice images with this lens and i really enjoyed using it and i do get that pleasure from using these lenses because you know they're 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 kind of ignored these days nobody wants them and they're really good optics well worth buying well worth snapping up if you see one for a cheap price don't pay any more than a tenner at the most 15 for one of these but yeah well worth buying uh, very very nice indeed very little vignetting with this lens which you'd expect again because it's a fairly slow aperture and very little fringing too certainly no more than many of its more expensive rivals a good 10 pounds worth grab one if you can finally today the last lens for today is this little beauty this is the Indostar 61 this is an amazing little lens it's a 50 millimeter f 2.8 it's a tessar so it's inherently sharp it's got a very groovy little zebra design and i don't know it's just a really nice little lens it makes some excellent images too let me show you more closely so there's our indostar 61 now this is a rangefinder lens it's an l39 mount screw mount so it just screws on same as an m42 except this is an l39 different mount different thread it's a rangefinder lens so it's really small and when it sits on your camera it looks very neat indeed the adapter for rangefinder lenses is, is tiny and it adds only what I don't know a centimeter or so to the lens it's very very small indeed so put one of these on your camera and you've got a very very small kit the only slight downside I find with this lens is that because it's a rangefinder lens it will focus down only to one meter or three feet and that's a characteristic of most rangefinder lenses I don't really know many rangefinder lenses that go much closer than that some go to 0.7 of a meter but that's about as good as it gets so that's a slight difficulty but don't forget if you're shooting on a crop sensor camera nothing about the lens changes but the effective close focal uh, focus distance changes so if you're shooting on micro four thirds your effective minimum focus distance because of magnification will be 50 centimeters if you're shooting on APS-C your effective close minimum focus distance and please do note the word effective will be 75 centimeters so you can get a little bit closer if you're using a crop sensor camera but even if you're using full frame it's no real handicap this lens is made very nicely it's all metal this one needs a bit of lubrication and they do lose their lubrication i don't think this one has ever been lubricated since new so it's really really stiff and horrible at the moment but all you need to do to clean them up take off this back plate here slide the focus ring forward put a couple of drops of engine oil onto the focusing helix not too much because it will go onto the glass so a tiny little amount maybe two drops is too much maybe just one drop and a little bit of grease under this plate here it's it, it's supposed to have grease under there so I'll clean it out and um, re-grease it and then it'll be nice and smooth I must do that to this one you can see from the 
screws there that this one has never been opened. The original paint sealing and shot is still there. So this one's long in need, about 40 years overdue for uh, a bit of lubrication. The aperture rings at the front, f2.8 to f16, everything's engraved and generally it's a really nice lens to use. I think it's a pretty good looking lens as well and it makes some really nice images. They're, they are sharp images from wide open because this is a Tessar lens with all the inherent sharpness of that design. Um, it's not a blur monster but near to your subject it will make some nice background blur and the blur it makes is actually of a very pleasing quality no harshness everything lovely and soft really nice it is a low contrast lens um, this lens makes rather delicate images colors are sort of pastely if you like and they're not as pumped up or pronounced as images from some other lenses like a Jupiter 8 for example but I love that look I shot this lens for years this was my only lens when I was learning photography this lens and my Fed 4 were a constant companion and I shot thousands and thousands of images with this lens really really nice images and I still continue to use it on digital today because I don't know, partly because I've got a soft spot for it, but also because it's a really nice lens and it's really, really cheap. This lens is, well, I mean, you can even find these for, I've seen these for as little as five pounds. And for a high quality optic, a coated optic, a rangefinder optic, how can you beat that? I mean, it, it's it's almost free. This is a really, really nice lens it doesn't have any vignetting it has very very little purple fringing almost none at all there's many 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 of them about and you know they were made in the millions so they'll continue to be available and very cheap for years and years and years and uh, that is a that is a nice thing also so a really nice little lens um if you've not tried rangefinder lenses before, try one of these. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. A beautiful little thing and a great way to spend a tenner. So there we are, four wonderful little lenses for £10 each. Proof that you can still buy high quality vintage lenses for your mirrorless cameras vintage lens photography or mirrorless cameras does not need to be an expensive hobby there's the proof <clears throat> so i guess that's about it from me for now i do hope you've enjoyed this episode please don't forget to like subscribe and give that bell a ring i must thank all of our subscribers people who've been with us for ages and ages and ages and people who've just joined up subscribers old and new a heartfelt thanks to you thank you very very much indeed for your support and a massive thanks to all the patrons patrons old patrons new people who've been with us a long time since forever and people who've just joined and are finding that this is a channel worth supporting thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and I do mean that and if you like the content on this channel why not consider becoming a patron yourself you can do it for as little as one dollar per month over at patreon.com forward slash xenography patrons enable this channel to do what it does without your support I wouldn't be able to do it so if you enjoy the content do consider becoming a patron so that's it from me for now. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography. <laughs>